A long time ago, in the faraway land of Southside Chicago, there lived a large, happy family. Circa 2000, British writer and later producer Paul Abbott began writing the dark, dark comedy slash drama series, Shameless. The story was derived from Abbott's own life as he grew up in an impoverished household with several other siblings and no adult supervision. The plot of Shameless is almost identical to Abbott's life, as Frank Gallagher, father to six children, is left in charge when his wife, Monica, runs off with another woman. In Shameless, Frank is unable to care for himself, let alone any of the other children. Hence, Fiona, Lip, Ian, Debbie, Carl, and Liam are forced to raise themselves. The story follows a family on their journey through life, facing all sorts of compromising situations as a result of simply trying to make ends meet. The original series of Shameless was created for English Channel 4 TV back in 2003. And roughly eight years later, Shameless is revived by Abbott's longtime friend, John Wells, who brings it to Showtime in 2011. Paul Abbott, the British Academy of Film and Television Arts award-winning writer and producer and creator of the series, as stated earlier, gained much of his influence from his own life. Abbott grew up in an impoverished section of Burnley along with his seven other siblings, him being the second to youngest. Abbott in an interview relayed that of the eight children, he was the only literate one, and being that his family consisted of one teen mom and no adult supervision, Abbott often found himself alone, which led to depression. Luckily, there was a light at the end of the tunnel when Abbott gained guidance of an English teacher at the Barden Public High School. His teacher motivated him to pursue his interest in writing and enroll into college. Later into Abbott's life, he came into contact with a director at the Warner Brothers Studios and mutual friend of John Wells. John Wells, the Virginia native and American television producer and director, then came into contact with Paul Abbott, who had shared the script with Wells. Wells enjoyed the script so much he wanted to bring it to the American people. Here's an interview with Wells describing the process of adapting Shameless for American television. And I said, what are you working on? He started telling me what he was working on. It was the story of his own family's life, which was ended up being Shameless. He said, that sounds fabulous. That sounds as crazy as the people I grew up with. And he said, um, oh, well, I'll send it to you. So he sent it to me, and I read it before they actually started making it in England. And I said, oh, I want to do this. This is great. This is it's 13 years ago because it's it took seven years to get made in the States from that moment forward. Because um, I thought everybody would just see what I saw in it. And um, and we I couldn't sell it. I could not sell it. Uh, largely because the people I was pitching it to kept saying to me, this doesn't exist in the United States. And I said, well, I don't know where you're from, but it exists where I'm from and it exists with my family. And let me introduce you to some of my cousins in West Virginia. Let me introduce you to some of my... Um, relatives in various parts of the country, and I grew up around a lot of this. So who are these Gallaghers? Let's start off by looking at the Gallagher family tree. Okay, so Frank and his bipolar wife, Monica, are married and have Fiona and Lip. Shortly thereafter, Monica has a brief affair with Frank's own brother, Clayton, and thus Ian is born. The affair is short-lived, and then Monica goes back to Frank. She then has Debbie, Carl, Lee, and Leslie Liam. In the U.S. series, however, Liam is an African-American, and there is no explanation as to why, so there's that. Monica then decides to leave two months after Liam is born, leaving Frank in charge, who ultimately hands over the responsibility to his eldest daughter of 17, Fiona. So who is Fiona Gallagher? Fiona, at the time of the show beginning, is a 17-year-old girl who dropped out of high school to support her five siblings, because there weren't any real adults are positive influences in the children's lives. Fiona is eventually relieved of her responsibility as the kids grow older. However, she is too tightly wound to live on her own or by herself. She continues to stay in the Gallagher home and assists mentally and financially keeping the family afloat. Fiona is a fierce force to be reckoned with as she is a bit of a man-eater, businesswoman, and danger junkie. Next, we have 15-year-old Lip Gallagher, as he is referred to. Lip is a nickname synonymous with his wisecracking, facetious comments he often dishes throughout each episode. Lip is what I feel to be Abbott's parallel identity, as Lip is the most educated man, man of the family and the only one who goes off to college. Lip is an arrogant, womanizing alcoholic just like Frank, but refuses to believe it. Like Fiona, as the children get, o get older, Lip assumes a lot of the responsibility, which often interferes with his personal life. 
Lip is very close to his 13-year-old brother, Ian, despite being born to a different father. Ian is one of the quieter siblings. However, Ian faces the brunt of his mother's psychoses. He is both bipolar and gay, just like his mother. Because of this, he struggled with school and relationships, which ultimately caused him to enlist into the army at 17 under his brother's identity. After a mental break, he came back home and found work at a local gay bar. Through the series, Ian encounters many relationships. However, the fans, and arguably Ian himself, best enjoy Ian's neighbor and ex-boyfriend, Mickey Milkovich. Next up, we have nurturing good girl, Debbie. Debbie is only nine years old when the series begins, and we are introduced to this very smart, very sweet little girl. While she is sweet, she also knows how to scheme in times of trouble. Throughout the series, we watch this little girl grow up into a maniacal teenager who is in a rush to grow up and a thirst to begin a family of her own. She becomes pregnant at age 15 by a boy who shortly moves away after hearing she is keeping it. This not only leaves a strain on Debbie, but on her family as well. Most surprising of all, Carl Gallagher. We are introduced to Carl when he is just seven years old, and he is a wild child. Carl is obsessed with guns, arson, and the female anatomy. Carl is also perceived as being the mo not the most intelligent man, man of the family, and also he often uses his ability to bully to get what he wants. He later gets involved with selling weapons or drugs, which lands him in juvie, ultimately humbling him. As he grows older, we see a new side to Carl, and he becomes a protective brother, a helpful, helpful financial asset to the Gallagher household, as well as a kind and often too generous boyfriend. Last but not least is Liam. Liam is the milkman's baby. No one knows why he's African American, and honestly, no one cares. Liam seems to be a baby in the beginning of the series, and his character really doesn't develop despite his age. The Gallagher family treats him as if he's a baby, although he is five years old by the end of season seven. With that, Liam is a family favorite, and undoubtedly Frank's, as his young mind is still impressionable enough into thinking that Frank is actually a good dad. That's it? I'm still here! Oh right, we have our psychotic, money-hungry, alcoholic main character, Frank Gallagher. Frank is the essence of Shameless, as he is often seen manipulating people and situations to play out in his favor, even if it means taking care of the sick in hopes of monetary compensation, convincing Carl he has cancer, or simply eating pizza off a dirty bench in the ghetto. Frank encompasses everything shameless, and albeit he's a savvy businessman, he truly is the world's worst father. I would never leave you. Ever. You gotta know that. After everything we've been through, you kind of just have to know that. Although, although the show is about the Gallaghers, Supporting characters such as Next Door Neighbors, Kevin Veronica, are so often involved in the Gallagher drama, it's almost as if they're part of the family. So, why should we care about the show? Did the public actually like it? According to IMDb Shameless, was rated 8.7 out of 10. On Metacritic, it received a 66%, an 88% on Rotten Tomatoes, and a 8.9 out of 10 on TV.com. For the most part, it seems the masses really enjoy this controversial show. Also, the Nielsen rating system provides a closer look into how well the show is doing based on viewership and the demographic the show is directed towards. Also, this chart helps look at each episode in more depth, seeing which episode was the most viewed and top rated. However, given the TVMA rating, of course there were some naysayers and concerned parents, that posts other important information and necessary info on the show, such as positive messages, positive role models, violence, sex, language, consumerism, drinking, drugs, smoking, alcohol, you name it. And despite all the noise and judgment, the fans just seem, can't seem to get enough. Under the hashtag shameless, fans can be found on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Tumblr, Pinterest, and other forms of social media. Fans are live-tweeting episodes, creating six-second vines, rip vine, 
and writing their own versions of alternative endings to the show. So I dove in headfirst onto Twitter. I found hundreds upon hundreds of tweets in response to hashtag shameless. Some were live tweeting, some had done fan arts, other had simply just been obsessing their hashtag obsession with the show. Obsess, hashtag obsess was the most commonly found hashtag also used in the hashtag shameless. I next headed over to Tumblr, only to find there were so many fan fictions revolving around the gay love story of Ian and Mickey. Many fans shipped or paired the two together through artwork, gifts, screenshots, mini stories, and more. I was surprised to see the level of dedications the fans not only showed towards the show, but also the two guys. Not only is it refreshing to see the acceptance of the boys' love story, but how great of a following that aspect of the show has gained. I'm from the south side of Chicago, and for all my shameless fans, you should know that. So basically, this guy lives in the south side, and he goes on a journey outside of his house and goes to the shapeless location. such as this can be found on Facebook. Um, upon my research, I had found hundreds of these videos under the hashtag Shameless on Facebook. There are also some other fans. You know, I probably wouldn't mind if I got cancer from lip secondhand smoke. Love you, God. No, that it's not for not making it cringy to watch, but entertaining nonetheless. There are hundreds of fans who produ uh, produce their own fan content. Any kind of um, review on the show, or predictions, or even their own alternative endings. And like I said earlier, these kind of incredible content videos can be found on Instagram, Twitter, Tumblr, Facebook, etc. Although Shameless does not yet have the seven principles of transmedia storytelling as created by Henry Jenkins, the transmedia professional, Shameless is still a growing franchise as Showtime has prepared to le release season eight. The exact date has not been released yet, but you can still purchase some of the incredible clothing. They also have their very own version of the app. You can find most stuff on Etsy, Amazon eBay, whatever you go to to find low prices. Hey, listen up, everyone. You're going to love this. What kind of a Gallagher are you? Fork over the cash. No shit. No. No. Adios, <laughs> I can't tell if you're laughing or crying. Yeah, so that is not set to release until after May because that's when they're recording it. So. Look for it maybe early 2018 on Netflix and hopefully before that on Showtime. Well, now that you have pretty much all there is to know about Shameless, you can tune into season eight when it premieres and find out if the Gallaghers truly did live happily ever after. <laughs> 